If you guys don't stop fighting, there will never be world peace. This was my appeal to my sister and babysitter in a crowded city bus <laughs> as they bickered about the proper use of inside voices. <laughs> I was six and saving the world was often on my mind. Growing up in a socially minded Jewish community, the concept of tikkun olam or healing the world was a key tenant of my life and my identity. I learned that it is our responsibility to restore, repair, and transform the world around us. And I took this responsibility to heart. I spent many of my best childhood days at the city square protesting the Iraq war or at my neighborhood homeless shelter, the Blanchett House, serving food. But my service was limited in scope. Although I participated, I still didn't fully understand what it meant to take on the responsibility of healing the world. I learned how to communicate my desire early on. Looking back on my bat mitzvah drosh, the speech Jews deliver at age 13 as they assume full membership into their congregation. I had already dedicated myself to making a difference in the world. At a central point in my speech, I declared, I accept that there are important things in life that go beyond me. Standing up for what's right, remaining positive in the face of adversity, the constant forward march of history, and I am awed by them. These are big words for such a little girl. I wanted to heal the world, but I only had an abstract understanding of what tikkun olam meant, and an even more vague notion of what it meant as a young person to enact change. My first exposure to political advocacy opened my eyes to what that active role could be. At the end of my senior year in high school, I worked with former Oregon Congresswoman Darlene Hooley to support the educational needs of National Guard veterans. It did not take long for me to understand the importance of this cause. National Guard veterans do not receive the same access to educational benefits as do active duty veterans. Yet many Guard members serve abroad in the same capacity as their active duty counterparts and come, to the same come home to the same competitive job market. Our fund sought to provide educational assistance to make the guard, the guard's already uh, difficult transition, sorry, a little easier. I served as Darlene's only staff member and shouldered the responsibility of much of our workload. From collecting donors lists to organizing our big fundraiser, all of my work was behind the scenes. One day, as we solicited donations for as we solicited donations, things changed. Darlene handed the phone to me and asked that I call the next donor. She explained that she thought I would connect with the donor because his kids attended my high school. Not thinking much of the assignment, assuming I'd reach a voicemail as we generally did, I dialed the donor's phone number. Just before I dialed, Darlene casually added, Ask him for a donation of $20,000. <laughs> I thought Darlene was kidding. I, I started laughing, waiting for her to join in on the joke. But she just stared at me with her assured eyes. From this, I knew two things. Darlene was not kidding. And I was not going to be able to get out. You can imagine what I was thinking as the phone rang. Who was I to ask for so much money? Why would this potential donor take me, a high school student, 
seriously. Where was the nearest exit, and why was Darlene standing in front of it? <laughs> but I was committed. After a short, friendly introduction about the fund, I cut right to the chase. Sir, I know you have a strong commitment to veterans' issues, and we're hoping that you can make a big impact to ensure that this fund is a success. Would you consider donating $20,000 <laughs> to the Hooli Veterans Fund? Silence. <laughs> That's all I heard for a long, drawn-out pause. The only thing worse than silence as, at this moment would have been laughter, which is what followed. <laughs> I was mortified. But I didn't know what else there was to say, so I just waited. Gradually, the donor's laughter faded, and in its place came something a little bit more reassuring. He explained that he was impressed by my passion for this issue, and he would be happy to donate. It was in this moment that I realized, at age 18, I was a big part of making this fund happen. This was tikkun olam, healing the world in action. FCNL has helped me to understand that anyone can make an effective change. If I may, one query from the equality testimony I think epitomizes this idea. Do you, res do you respect that of God in everyone, though it may be expressed in unfamiliar ways or difficult to discern? Each of us has a particular experience of God, and each must find the way to be true to it. I value FCNL's Young Adult Program because it provides young people with the opportunity and tools to become actors, turning Quaker testimony into action. As some have alluded to, let me give you an idea of of how this plays out. Within our, few, our first few weeks at FCNL, my fellow program assistants and I responded to important questions from you, our network, helped to guide our messaging as the organization navigated the delicate political environment surrounding the, Syria, the Syrian crisis, published on the website as well as in national and hometown newspapers, and as an organization lobbied over 85 congressional offices, providing the unpopular but important perspective that war is not the answer in Syria. And we, as a program assistant class, saw a rare Washington victory. Being an actor for political change as a recent college graduate is not an easy thing. And I struggle with this on a daily basis. Sometimes I opt for the easier or less challenging, less nerve wracking option. We all do. But my time at FCNL has solidified what I, already, I had already begun to know. Young people are powerful. Just think what would happen if young people, who soon will comprise one-third of the electorate, came out to vote in greater numbers. It would change the course of elections. We as young people have to recognize that we play an essential role in enacting political change, that we, like everyone else, have to shoulder the burden of action. And what an honor it is to begin to carry that burden. Thank you.